Welcome to the Hooded Cobra Commander 788 channel, and welcome to my first ever G.I. Joe action figure review. We are going to be reviewing Breaker today, uh, but before I get started, I did want to say a few words. Um, first of all, there are other G.I. Joe action figure reviewers on YouTube, and of course they'll do a much better job than, uh, than I will. They're much more experienced collectors than I am. Uh, but it looks like fun, and I've wanted to do it for a while, so today I thought I'd give it a spin. Um, before we get into reviewing Breaker here, um, uh, I wanted to make a few comments about myself. I am uh, a relatively new collector. Um, I haven't been doing this for a long time. I did get um, G.I. Joe action figures when I was a kid, and I enjoyed them very much. I've only recently rediscovered them as an adult and as an, a, a collector. Um, so I'm not a very experienced collector, and I'm sure the more experienced guys out there will uh, have plenty to say and pl plenty to correct me about, and that's fine. That's how we learn. Um, uh, a comment on my collection. My collection, the scope of my collection is uh, fairly limited. Um, I am not looking for uh, mint on card figures or mint in box um, vehicles. Uh, for me, a, a complete item for my collection will be a figure or the vehicle um, with all of the parts or accessories uh, unbroken uh, and with the file card if, if there's a, a figure involved. Um, so to me, uh, or for my purposes, that is what I'm looking for for a complete entry into the collection. So as you might imagine, I have a lot of incomplete um, figures and vehicles that I'm still working on completing. Uh, and one of those figures is Breaker here. I actually do not have Breaker's file card. I will pick that up eventually. Um, it's not high on my uh, agenda, but, um, but eventually I will complete this figure. But I wanted to review Breaker first for a couple reasons. First of all, um, uh, Breaker is not thoroughly reviewed by other reviewers. You, you don't see a whole lot of reviews of Breaker, and it's it's not hard to see why. He's a pretty plain character, but most importantly, uh, Breaker was the first ever G.I. Joe action figure that I got as a kid. Now, this is not my original one. Um, that one was misplaced or broken long, long ago, uh, probably um, about 30 years ago. Um, but there's a lot of nostalgia for me uh, in this Breaker action figure. And uh, so I wanted to tackle him first. Um, now, uh, Breaker came out in 1982. Uh, and in 1982, I would have been seven years old, which is the perfect age. That's the, like the target uh, age for these action figures. I really, they really came out at the perfect time for me to get into them and to love them and to uh, want to get a lot of them. Uh, and I remember uh, the first wave that came out, and I remember that I got the first few uh, action figures with these uh, straight arms, like um, like Breaker here. Um, these arms have this point of articulation at the elbows, um, but they don't don't have the swivel um, the swivel arm battle grip that came out in the following year. And I remember how much um, uh, I how happy I was that they added a swivel at the uh, at the elbow because uh, it was it was a little bit awkward to pose some of these and to for some of the figures to carry their weapons uh, but uh, for collecting purposes I wanted to start out getting the actual first figure that I got as a kid which would have been the straight arm 1982 breaker and that's the guy we're going to be looking at today now um, breaker as you can see, is pretty plain. Uh, he shares a lot of parts with um, others in the 1982 uh, series. Uh, the chest piece was shared by Hawk and Grunt, and the the waist and legs were shared by almost all of the 1982 uh, series. Um, his head was shared by by Rock and Roll here. Rock and Roll had. Uh, blonde beard and hair, and, uh, and of course Clutch, uh, who had black hair and a black beard. Uh, but it's the same sculpt, it's, it's the same head, just painted a different color. Um, 
breaker came with some accessories. He came with his helmet and the detachable communications headset which had a wire that connected to his communications backpack. Now, um, Breaker didn't come with any uh, guns, um, and which I think is a little bit odd, but one thing that uh, works for his favor with not having any handheld guns is that he goes great with the vehicle that came out at the time, the 1982 Ram motorcycle, which with its pretty awesome side Gatling gun. Now, I remember as a kid, the TV commercial that, um, I, th I think the first commercial that I saw um, was uh, with Breaker on the Ram motorcycle. Um, and since he doesn't have a gun himself, I think he works well with on the motorcycle. He can still wear his communications backpack and his helmet, and he can talk to headquarters as he's buzzing around and uh, mowing down the enemy with his side gun. Uh, one odd choice um, is uh, was in the um, comic book. Rock and Roll was paired with the motorcycle. In fact, there's a, a, a scene in the first issue of the G.I. Joe comic book in which uh, Rock and Roll refers to the Ram motorcycle as his motorcycle. Uh, of course, Rock and Roll did not come with the Ram motorcycle, um, but I, I really think that Breaker is a better choice. Um, Rock and Roll, he has this really massive uh, machine gun. Um, now I'm missing the bipod on it, unfortunately. That's another piece that I'll have to pick up in order to complete this figure. But um, but he, he has a gun, and if he's riding the motorcycle, there's not really a good place to, to store the gun, to stow the gun. Um, so I really think that Breaker's the better choice here uh, for, for the Ram motorcycle. Uh, and that's the, way, that's the way I like to, like to set him up. Now, um, Breaker, as I said, is not complete um, because he does not have his file card, but there are reasons that, for me to suspect that he's not complete for other reasons. Um, and I'm going to point them out, and perhaps uh, a skilled collector uh, can uh, give me some answers on this, and, um, you know, it'll be a learning opportunity for me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, maybe we can all learn together. Um, one reason, one thing that's odd about this uh, breaker action figure is, let me get in closer, he has a silver painted uh, grenade on his shirt. Now, uh, pretty much all versions of Breaker that I have found um, have a an unpainted grenade. It's just green the same color as his shirt. Um, it is possible that a previous owner painted this. Um, it's maybe it's a, a, a foreign version uh, that has been cobbled together into uh, this, you know, allegedly original 1982 um, version of Breaker. But I do not know. I do not know where that silver uh, hand grenade comes from. Uh, when again, most of the time, I see an unpainted hand grenade on these Breaker action figures. Now, I'm not particularly bothered by it. Um, I will uh, eventually pick up another breaker, probably several of them, uh, and I do eventually want to get the swivel arm uh, breaker. Um, so, for display purposes and for my purposes right now, this is completely adequate. Um, but I just would like to know exactly why that thing is silver. I, I do not know. Another thing um, that doesn't seem to fit is the backpack. The there was a, uh, a change between 1982 and 1983. The 1982 action figures, like Breaker, were re-released in 1983 with the swivel arm battle grip, as I said, and I don't have an example of Breaker with the swivel arm battle grip, but I do have Clutch here from 1983, who shared the same arms 
and you can see his swivel arm here. That's it would have been basically the same thing for the 1983 breaker. But another thing that changed were the backpacks. Um, the pegs in the backpacks were different, and I'll, I have an example from the actual 1982 Grunt. Let me pull your backpack out, Grunt, and let's look at these uh, look at these backpack pegs. You can see that the actual 1982 uh, pegs are a bit um, bigger, kind of thicker, a little shorter, and have they have a flattened uh, top on them, whereas the 1983 ones were a bit rounded, so I, I and, and a bit longer and a bit thinner, and so that, I think that this is a 1983 backpack, not 1982. Um, an additional problem with that, though, is that it, it fits pretty well in this back, uh, in the uh, the hole that is supposed to hold the backpacks, whereas the actual 1982 backpack does not does not fit well at all. It, it, I can kind of force it in there, but but it doesn't stay, um, which is weird. Um, so that's another reason why I think that this chest piece comes from something else, and I don't know what. Um, but like I said, this backpack I'm, I'm pretty certain is a 1983. So in order to complete this figure, first of all, I need to figure out what's up with this uh, chest and back piece. Uh, and I need to get an actual 1983 backpack, so I will eventually do that. For the time being, anyway, I want to uh, point out a couple of things that I don't care for about our breaker here. Um, I do like him with the Ram motorcycle, as I said. I don't mind that he doesn't have uh, any handheld weapons. I just dropped Grunt's backpack. Um, I'll pick that up in a minute. Um, but one thing that I that does bother me about this setup here with his his headset and, and the wire is that the the hole for the wire is over here on one side, um, and it tends to pull his head he, um, that direction or the opposite direction. I you know if you try to have him look straight forward, um, the the wire ma tends to make him you know look to the I guess his right, um, uh, or his, yeah, his left, I mean. Um, so th I think these wires, uh, uh, several of the figures had accessories that had this kind of wire that plugged into the backpack. I really wish they had done something different with them, uh, perhaps made them more rubbery, uh, perhaps um, uh, made them longer, I don't know. But, um, but I had a a hard time with that as a kid and I still have a hard time with it. Some people just keep it unplugged and that's fine. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, you kind of use it as an antenna or something, but I don't think it actually looks very good as an antenna even when it's straight and not curved like this. Um, plus, I, I think it's just it just looks right plugged into the backpack. Um, but as I said, um, yeah, we've got He's less posable with the thing on and with it uh, plugged in. He he wants to wants to look it off in one direction. Um, as all of the nineteen or all of really the eighties GI Joe action figures, except for one, uh, the nineteen eighty two and eighty three Scarlet had uh, foot pegs uh, or holes for foot pegs, uh, so that you could uh, stand them up. And I've. Uh, uh, Put him on his figure stand here. Um, oh, there's Grunt's backpack. Uh, put him on this figure stand. Uh, they did not come with figure stands at the time. Um, you, we got figure stands with the um, accessory packs that came out. I think they first came out in '83. Um, but that's how you got the, the figure stands. And we, when playing with them, we didn't generally use the figure stands, but um, occasionally they were nice to have if we were going to have a figure that was just going to be standing up and we didn't want to prop them up against something. They certainly do stand better. I mean, you can stand them up without the figure stand, um, but they're a little bit precarious, especially when you're a kid and, you know, you're doing an action scene. They get knocked over pretty easily. Um, but I can tell you that the figure stands got lost uh, frequently. Um, and, I, and I can tell you that 
like this um, this headset probably uh, as a kid I probably lost that pretty quickly. Um, if, if you hear a, a howling in the background, that is not a werewolf. That is the large dog in my backyard that is uh, howling at the neighbors, I guess. Um, anyway, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up. Um, 1982 straight arm breaker. Uh, my first G.I. Joe action figure. Um, we have some things to learn about him. Uh, and we have some things to get uh, for him in order to make him complete. But I wanted to make this my first ever action figure review. There's, this is the this is the first one for me, um, the first one as a kid. And when I started collecting again, it's the first one I got as an adult. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope, look forward to reading your comments. Um, and if any of you have any knowledge about uh, the 1982 Straight Arm Breaker, that would help me answer some of my questions. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much.